So across my globetrotting adventures, I have stumbled upon this HTC phone. I can't really tell you much about it at first glance, but I knew from the beginning this was a pre-Android era phone, given the reduced size of the display and the fact that it most likely is a resistive type of touchscreen rather than a capacitive one. So that meant that it should have a stylus selector here, which indeed it does but more on that later on th during our in-depth presentation. For now, let's just put a tabletop view and see what this thing is all about. So this apparently is an HTC Diamond 2 and it's quite a sleek looking device. I like the minimalistic design, the squared off edges, the new edgy look. It was right up there in terms of looks and feel in late 2009 when this thing was launched. It's pretty robust and well built. It has some sort of metallic feeling um, accents to it, but I'm not fairly certain that it is indeed metal. This bezel seems to be metallic though. I can't really tell for sure. It might just be uh, plated plastic after all. Uh, but the chassis is strong enough and the thing doesn't bend, creak or... Um, except for this rather cheap looking battery cover which tends to flex a bit under stress. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Mostly this is an okay, uh, mostly this is a well-built device. The battery is right here. This is still one of the devices, one of those devices which allows you to remove and replace the battery while on the go. Sorry about the dark, uh, um, the dark uh, view of the phone. Actually, it's all black and my camera doesn't seem to pick the hue all that well. So anyway, this is the inside of the phone. And just for kicks, I will show you what's written here. Though, interestingly, there's not much information about the about the phone model itself. Just a couple of part numbers and uh, stuff like that. I wonder if this might just be a prototype phone. I can't really tell for sure. There we go. So yeah, it's a bit strange. I'll try to find out later on and see if that's the case. Uh, I just saw two of them sp spread out on the on a piece of cloth on the ground and some shady looking character was selling them. And uh, he initially asked uh, around 40 euros for both of them, but I got it down to about six euros for one piece. He later imagined that I was going to get the two of them, but actually I don't even have any use for this one, except for presenting it to you. So I just uh, bought just the one. I don't know, maybe I was wrong because this thing seems to be in a good nick and in good functioning order and maybe I could sell it for a profit though I'm way past that uh, stage in my life. Anyway, I digress. So for convenience sake I have placed a SIM card inside this phone as uh, some of you viewers have uh, very kindly shown interest in my clips and suggested that I would also film a f functioning phone and try to call it and so on. So that's what I'm going to do today with this HTC. Now there's also the battery which I'll try to focus right now and zoom in a bit. See if this gets it right. So yeah, there's a bit of information for you about the battery. Uh, it was uh, 
removable lithium ion 1100 milliamp hour capacity capacity battery so there I've charged it up overnight so let's just put it inside the phone other way around and just start the thing up so turning on the device uh, you seem to have to you are required to push this button on the top here I guess HTC by the time this thing came out were mimicking iPhone which had been on the market for two years now the original iPhone and they really had their work cut out for them as the iPhone naturally the Apple product was more user friendly so let's just turn this thing on and see what we get turns on right away so it's in excellent condition given that I paid only five to six euros on the the darn thing so yeah I like these uh, minimalistic buttons here there's nice jingle intro tune there's supposed to be some function to swipe and zoom in or pinch to zoom the display I guess that was a thing back then we take a lot of things for granted right now in the modern smartphone era but you just go back 12 years in tech time and really you will get huge huge differences in terms of what was considered standard and what not so let me just insert the pin in this sim and we'll be on our merry way so yeah the operating language seems to be German but I can switch that no issue so I guess I can tell you what's at fault with this particular phone I mean this model and this uh, particular OS it's Windows 6.1 and really this from what I can recall and from what the menu shows me this has no option to change the language so we're stuck with I believe Dutch it's not German so I'm, I apologize for that I have no German or Dutch uh, experience with the languages but really it seems to be a Germanic language that at least I, I can recognize and know but I guess this phone's not all that bad it offered uh, Bluetooth 2.0 a wireless connection uh, the display was a TFT 3.2 inch diagonal LCD display showing 65,000 colors uh, but the touch screen as uh, previously mentioned was not a capacitive one but a resistive one so each time you wanted to really use the touch screen at its full potential you needed to use this flimsy looking um, stylus uh, operating uh, dealy stick which would be very uh, easy to break and also damage the screen as shown here it seems the previous owner of this phone had some sort of preference for an icon or program shown in the middle of the display thus this rather nasty looking mark in the plastic film I bet this is polyethylene plastic or something like that for the sake of uh, uh, nostalgia let's try to give it a call and see if it works <laughs> okay so it seems to be working by the way don't steal my phone number and call me <laughs> I'm just kidding you can call me for the sake of things I will try to answer this and see if it actually works yeah so the phone itself is actually in working order it's not even locked on some sort of you know obscure Dutch <laughs> carrier or German one at that from the mid 2000s or the 2010s so yeah it's a pretty good snag other important things to note about this phone 
It was also called an HTC Warhawk for AT&T and HTC Topaz. I don't know what that is, or maybe that's just the platform. Right, right now I'm just reading to you stuff from the internet. Uh, it's pretty compact at 108 or so millimeters by 53 by 13.7 and it's pretty light in the sense that it's not cumbersome in your pocket but it's not flimsy light at what 117.5 grams is just the right weight for a serious robust feeling foam so before we draw any conclusions to this HTC Touch Diamond 2, let's look at the camera, take some sample pics and see what's what with this little gadget. So I'm just going to turn around and take a photo of the camera, of the prop camera shown there and see if I can manage to get a decent image. So yeah, it's making those weird sounds through its speakers. Yeah, but the shot, I guess, it's pretty decent for what it is. Details are nicely uh, shown. There's some sort of subject separation, though not much. Yeah, so really average pick for 2009, I guess. Less than average today. So getting back to the phone and drawing some conclusions to it, actually I think it's a staple HTC product and it really spoke for their design language and it's definitely worth a look into if you're uh, collecting old phones. It's a great conversation starter it's not that often that you see an HTC, especially in a good aesthetic condition like this one. So yeah, I, I'd say this will most certainly be worth anywhere from 20 to 50 euros, but over that amount will be a stretch. Now, collectability, this is another topic of discussion. These phones will never gather value, not significantly anyway. So in 10 years time, it might be worth double what you paid for it initially, but that's no real reason to buy it. The only reason is if you're into old stuff and old obsolete tech like me, then you should definitely give it a look. Or better yet, you can keep watching my videos as I tend to buy, collect and hoard old obsolete tech stuff like this one so you don't have to. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.